A major heat wave will bring record-breaking temperatures to the United States over the next one to two weeks and significant rounds of severe weather with damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes in addition to some flash flooding rains we'll talk about as well. And if you are here, again, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We do straightforward, accurate, reliable weather information here on my channel daily. So make sure to subscribe to my channel for that. Like the video throughout by giving it a thumbs up, especially if you enjoy the forecast, and share it with a friend, family member, and on social media. I definitely appreciate it. Let's look at the severe risk zones for today, and there's three different ones here in the yellow across the high plains, stretching from eastern Montana down through Nebraska, northwest Kansas, and northeast Colorado. That is a slight risk of severe weather, where scattered severe thunderstorms will be possible this afternoon and evening. Another area here across the Midwest from Illinois and Iowa over into Indiana, western Ohio, southern Wisconsin, and southern lower Michigan, where again, Again, scattered severe thunderstorms will be possible. And then over here into Virginia and northern North Carolina, again, where scattered severe thunderstorms will be possible. Main threats will be damaging winds, but there could be a threat for significant damaging hail across the high plains if you live in eastern Montana, the western Dakotas, and into the panhandle and into portions of western Nebraska. Could be seeing hailstones up to tennis ball size as we go through the afternoon and the evening. And there is a tornado threat. It is low, but it is covering a a lot of different areas here from portions of the Southern Great Lakes, Western Ohio Valley, stretching through the Midwest and into the Northern Plains. In the green, this is where we are looking at a 2% chance of tornadoes going through today. And then the severe threat zone shifts just a little bit further south tomorrow and a kind of a lesser threat. In the dark green, we're seeing isolated strong to severe thunderstorms possible. Again, the high plains from the Dakotas down as far south as northern Kansas, stretching through the Ohio Valley there and into the northeast. The northeast over here, the near the I-95 corridor, Boston, Hartford, and New York City, we could be seeing a more scattered basis of severe weather as we go through Sunday and there is not much of a tornado threat tomorrow. It's mainly going to be for strong winds and some hail. The tornado threat all across the U.S. on Sunday is less than 2%. So let's start here in the eastern United States. We'll go over to the central U.S. and then talk about the western U.S. after that. Here at noon, we are seeing a widely scattered kind of complex of storms moving across the Illinois Valley. That will be the area of concern as it pushes into Indiana and Ohio as we go into the afternoon. Looks like it's going to be on a weakening trend, though, but there still could be isolated strong wind gusts, some hail, and an isolated tornado with that, especially into southern lower Michigan as we go into the afternoon hours. Additional storms will pop up across Virginia and North Carolina back into the Smoky Mountains of eastern Tennessee. These will be more isolated wind and hail producers as well with a low tornado risk. Overnight tonight, some more storms will be moving across Ohio into West Virginia and Western Pennsylvania, again posing another isolated threat for strong winds and hail and a low tornado risk. And then going into the daybreak on Sunday, we're going to see a couple areas of thunderstorm concern. We're watching another complex moving into Eastern Iowa, Northern Illinois. That will be the focus for the Ohio Valley in the afternoon. And then in the morning hours, we're just seeing some uh, you know lighter, moderate showers across the northeast at times and some thunderstorms along the Appalachians in the West Virginia area and then going into the afternoon again that complex into the Midwest will be the area of more storm development across Indiana Ohio and Kentucky as we go into Sunday afternoon we are watching the northeast though as we have a little bit of a frontal boundary moving into Maine uh, New Hampshire into Massachusetts down into New York State New Jersey this could be an area to spark the potential for some damaging wind gusts and some hail on a scattered basis Sunday afternoon into Sunday evening. And by the way, all these storms are going to be producing some locally heavy downpours. Now looking here at the central U.S. at noon today, like we mentioned, we got that thunderstorm complex on a weakening trend moving through the Illinois Valley, especially central Illinois into northeastern Missouri. As we go through the afternoon, additional storms will develop up here in the high plains of the Dakotas and into western Nebraska, posing a risk potentially for some damaging hail up to tennis ball size. Notice how these are individual storms. Those are called supercells, and we could also see a few tornadoes with those as well through the evening hours. Eventually, they will cluster up and move across eastern Nebraska, moving into western, Ohio, western Iowa, so the Omaha area, Lincoln down there into northwest Kansas, keeping an eye on that cluster. Another cluster up 
there into North Dakota overnight tonight could pose a risk for some wind and hail. And then as we go through the day on Sunday, morning hours again, just like today, another complex moving through Northern Illinois and Iowa, bringing the threat for wind and hail and some heavy rainfall. And then additional storms again on an isolated basis in the Northern Plains Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. Now let's look at the western U.S. here at noon. We are seeing not much happening besides maybe a shower or a thunderstorm up there into Montana. Going into the afternoon, the monsoonal flow will activate as we get to peak daytime heating around 2, 3, 4 o'clock, somewhere in mid-afternoon, and we're going to start to see those widely scattered thunderstorms like you typically see across the Rockies in the Four Corners region. And then as we go through Sunday, we'll wash those out as we lose the daytime heating. And then once we get it again on Sunday, we're going to see again more widely scattered showers and storms. Although the Pacific Northwest will start to get some active weather, Oregon into northern Idaho and western Montana Sunday night could see some lighter, even some moderate pockets of rainfall. Now let's look at the rainfall amounts between now and Monday morning on July 21st. And notice the heaviest will be across Iowa, central Illinois, down into southern Indiana, northern Kentucky, all the way to West Virginia. That's the corridor where we're going to see numerous thunderstorm complexes over the next 12 to 24 hours, maybe even 36 hours here across this region. And this could be dumping around one to three inches worth of rain. There are some storms in the northeast could drop up to an inch of rain there. And then we got more storms and a cluster of them up into eastern Montana and to North Dakota, again, dropping around an inch of rain there as well. And looking at our temperatures this weekend, fairly nice north of the boundary up there into the high plains of the Dakotas and into the upper Midwest like Minnesota. Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan stretching over to the parts of Maine over there in the Northeast. We're going to be in the mid and upper 70s, somewhat lower humidity, but the heat will be on across the deep south here across the central and the southern plains in the Gulf Coast, well into the 90s and the triple digits this afternoon, and that will continue as we go into Sunday afternoon as well, much of the same. And in fact, our temperatures during the work week this week will be warming up in a big way. Major heat wave is ticketed for the central United States between Monday, July 21st and Friday, July 25th. Temperature anomalies here could be 15 to 20 degrees above normal, a little bit cooler across the west coast in the Sacramento Valley, actually leaning meaning 20 degrees below normal out there. But looking here at the ridge of high pressure, this is the focal point for our major heat wave. It will peak on Wednesday, July 23rd during the middle of the week, and that could bring some really high heat and humidity up into the Midwest, the Southern Great Lakes, and the Ohio Valley with the center of that ridge down near the Memphis area. So as we look at daily highs into the central Southern Plains, into the lower Mississippi, even at times the mid-Mississippi Valley, we're going to be seeing, the again, daily highs well into the 90s and triple digits all the way through the work week. And with the corn crops maturing there into the Corn Belt, which is the Midwest, and that is going to create those higher dew point values well into the 70s and low 80s. That is air you can wear, That which means as you walk right outside and you do nothing, not even any exercise, and you start sweating, that is air you can wear. It is so muggy outside, so humid, and that's what we see as daily across the entire Midwest and Corn Belt as we go through this week. That will raise our high heat index values. So as we go through Monday, notice the heat index across the central southern plains in the triple digits. That will lift up to South Dakota, Minnesota, and Iowa, Nebraska as we go into Tuesday. Wednesday looks to be one of the hottest days for the Corn Belt and the Midwest into the 105, 110 range. Even on the lakeshore of Chicago, Milwaukee, and Green Bay getting very hot there on Wednesday. And then as we go into Thursday and Friday, looking pretty hot there as well. Now that will lead to directly to storm energy as we go through the week. Starting the week on Monday, July 21st, a lot of storm energy building out here in the high plains and parts of the Corn Belt, and that will lead to a severe weather threat for the Dakotas and parts of Minnesota there, and then again across the southeast from Kentucky and Tennessee into parts of Georgia and South Carolina, including the low country there as well. Mainly going to look at the threat for damaging winds and hail, although there could be some mesoscale processes here that could lead to isolated tornadoes. That won't be known until the day on Monday, but you can see there will be a couple clusters of storms that evolve across portions of the upper Midwest and the Northern Plains. A couple storms developing down here in the Southeast as well with isolated severe weather possible. Not only Monday do we have this high storm energy, but going into Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, and yeah, you get it. You're going to have a lot of storm energy daily here 
here across the United States. And that will lead to additional storm complexes that evolve from the Dakotas. They'll drop east and southeastward across Minnesota into Iowa, Wisconsin and northern Illinois, and then over here into Michigan, even southeastern Canada, Ontario and Quebec into areas near Toronto, uh, Montreal, Thunder Bay, you guys could start to see more of that active weather as well, including severe weather through the week. And looking here at the ridge of high pressure this week, notice it's across the southeast. It's going to retrograde further to the west as we go into the last few days of July and going into the opening stages of August. And look how big that donut hole gets across portions of the desert southwest. That donut hole is the ring of fire. That is the heat heat wave that builds across the desert southwest and that means the core of the heat by the time we get into early August will shift from the southeast towards the central plains and into the midwest so it's going to get even hotter it's going to get even more humid during those areas uh, into those areas as we go into early August and notice the storm track may be shifting even further north because of that moving further west so uh, southern Canadian prairies the very far upper midwest like the arrowhead of Minnesota northern Wisconsin the UP of Michigan and southeastern Canada could be getting quite active in the heavy rainfall department and the severe weather department as well as we go into early August. Finally, before we uh, take off here in the video, we are keeping an eye on the tropics. The tropical update here, the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida, has a newly uh, issued area, 20% chance in the main development region. This is not even close to any source of land right now, but it is something to watch as we go through the next seven days as the low chance of becoming a tropical depression or a tropical storm. And the East Pacific has increased odds. Yesterday we were talking a 20%, now up to a 30% chance here of the development again between North America and Hawaii. We'll be keeping an eye on that as we go. Uh, over the next seven days. Thank you all for watching. If you are here, we do straightforward, reliable, and accurate weather information daily on the channel. If you want that, make sure to subscribe to my channel below. Uh, share it with a friend, family member, and on social media. Like the video as well. Very important. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoy it. I definitely appreciate it. If you have any comments, questions, and concerns, make sure to jot that down in the comment section down below this video. We are here 24-7, all day, all night, to answer any and all questions, comments, and concerns that you may have. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for your support, and have a wonderful rest of your Saturday out there.